Shalom everyone, welcome back. I want to wish everyone a good Arab Shabbos. Many times we read the Talmud and we read about famous holy rabbis who are sages of Israel. There are different names for them. They're called Chazal, which is an acrostic for Chachmenu Zichrona Lebracha, or sages of blessed memory. Um, or there are other various names that we refer to the great rabbis, the sages of the Talmud. Uh, but in any case, when I was a youngster growing up in Toronto, uh, I had read about such rabbis. I think one of my favorites was Rabbi Eliezer ben Herkinus. Rabbi Eliezer ben Herkinus was one of the rabbis of the Mishnah, similar to Rabbi Akiva. It was not brought up very observant or very learned. And uh, in fact, a very similar story to Rabbi Akiva. At an older age, perhaps 40 years old or so, he decided he wanted to go out and to study Torah. Well, his father, Hyrcanus, was quite a wealthy man. The word, the name Hyrcanus is probably a Greek name, and uh, it probably represented a man who was not so, um, so observant or so learned, more assimilated or more Hellenistic. In any case, his father was very much opposed to his going away. His father said, if you go away to learn Torah, then I will disinherit you. I will no longer uh, give you any of my wealth and uh, my land. He was so opposed to him. But Rabbi Eliezer wanted to study Torah so badly that he decided he was going to go anyways. And he traveled for a distance until finally he came to Yavna, to the seat of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, who was the leading rabbi of his day. And he sat by Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, and Rabbi Yochanan smelled a terrible smell coming from his mouth. And he wanted to know, what is that smell coming from your mouth? And it turned out that Rabbi Eliezer was starving on the trip to Yavna. He was so hungry that he couldn't find anything else to eat except for cattle dung. And that's what he ate. And Rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan was so shocked at that, that this young man wanted to study Torah so badly that he was even prepared to starve in order to do that. It was amazing. Well, many years went by. Rabbi Eliezer became a great sage himself. And eventually, one time, he was invited to come back to his city and to give a discourse, a Torah discourse. So everyone heard of the famous Rabbi Eliezer, and they all came to hear his words of wisdom. And among them came his own father, Hyrcanus, who sat in the back and was ready to say publicly that I disown my son from all of my possessions. But after a brilliant discourse, that everyone was absolutely stunned at his, his knowledge, his wisdom. At the end, they asked for questions, and Hyrcanus stood up. And he said, I have come to disinherit my son for not obeying me and not listening to me and going off to study Torah. But now I see what has become of him, and I give all of my worldly possessions to him all of them. And it must have been a very touching story, a very emotional reunion between father and son. And the, the father recognizing how important it is for the son to study Torah. That story had a great influence on me since I studied Torah a little bit later in life myself. And it, it really stunned me. And as time went on, I was wondering, do such sages still exist? Are there still sages like Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai and Rabbi Akiva? Do such great, brilliant scholars such as that exist? Well, when I grew up in Toronto, we didn't have any. We had no scholars like that. We had no sages. We had no rabbis like that. But I had heard of them. When I had the opportunity uh, some 55 years ago to go on a trip to New York, to Crown Heights, and to spend a Shabbos with the Chabad community in Crown Heights in the late 1960s, I jumped at the opportunity. I was curious. I wanted to find out what it was like there. 
I went and I was very emotional and it was a very beautiful experience. But the highlight of the experience was attending a Fabrengen, a gathering with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. On Shabbos, after davening at 1.30 in the afternoon, people would rush home, eat, and come back to the Chabad headquarters, and they would hear a discourse, and many discourses, of Fabrengen from the Rebbe himself. And I had never seen anything like that. And it was, there were people there translating for me. It was in Yiddish. They transferred it. I was absolutely stunned. For the first time in my life, I actually saw a modern-day sage, someone who was in the image of the great sages of the Talmud, and someone who spoke with God, someone who was just an amazing, had amazing insight and knowledge and care and love for everyone. This was the Rebbe. And that was something that absolutely, uh, absolutely had such a major effect on me such a tremendous effect on me, actually seeing and being near someone like that in our day and age. This Shabbos is Gimel Tammuz. It's the yard site of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, where we recount the Rebbe and we talk about the Rebbe and we remember the legacy that the Rebbe left us. But the Rebbe is still with us very much. They say their great sages don't die. They live on and they live on. They live on in their teachings and their example to all of us. They're with us always. And indeed, the Rebbe is definitely with us, has always been with us. More Chabad centers have opened up since the Rebbe passed away than in all the years that the Rebbe led, led the Chabad leadership in person. And they say that every single day a new Chabad center starts someplace in the world. It's an amazing thing where many people thought that after the Rebbe's passing, the Chabad movement would be decimated, would never recover from it. But we have recovered. We've, we've not only recovered, but we've grown tremendously to become the most dynamic movement in Judaism today. And that is not uh, an overstatement. That is definitely the truth. And everyone in all aspects of life in, throughout uh, Jewish life and throughout the world acknowledge that. Because we follow the legacy of the Rebbe. What did the Rebbe teach us? What did the Rebbe want for us? Uh, what was the Rebbe's value system and his moral code? All of these things stay with us through the Rebbe's teachings, his sikhs, his mamarim, and his personal example. So this is something that we talk about, we think about during the time of, uh, of, uh, of Gimel Tamas. And we hope that you'll attend Fabrengans in your own community here in San Diego. There will be a Fabrengan at Chabad of Carmel Valley this Saturday night, tomorrow night at 9.30. Contact, go online to Chabad of Carmel Valley for the address. And it's, for avail, it's open for men and women. And you'll hear uh, very beautiful words of Torah and, and stories of the Rebbe from the Shluchim of San Diego. We encourage you all to come and attend. Candle lighting, the Shabbos will be at 7.43, and I want to wish you all a very, very good Shabbos.